I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, then I will kill you. Liam Neeson's journey from a small Irish town boy to a Hollywood superstar is nothing short of a cinematic tale itself. From humble beginnings, unexpected twists, to spotlight moments, Liam's life story is filled with layers and surprises. Want to uncover how the boy next door became a global sensation? Dive in. Early life. Born on June 7, 1952 in Ballymena, Northern Ireland, he's got tales that'll make you raise an eyebrow or two. First, a quick snapshot. Liam was the third kiddo in the Neeson family. His dad looked after the school and his mom whipped up food. They were super tight with their Roman Catholic beliefs. Liam's squad? Three sisters. Growing up wasn't all roses. Northern Ireland had its share of troubles. Now let's talk about young Liam's obsession. Boxing. You'd think it was because of all the chaos around him, but nope, the kid just loved it. He was a tiny nine-year-old Liam, gloves on, practicing jabs and hooks at the All Saints Youth Club. Fast forward a bit, and he's the top dog in boxing, all before hitting 12. Dude could have gone pro. But even with those boxing gloves on, Liam had an itch to act. Blame it on his teacher who threw him on stage for a play when he was 11. That one gig? It stuck with him big time. Remember being 15 and looking for your first job? Liam did the bellboy gig at a Ballymena hotel. And guess what? One day, in walks Helen Mirren. Yep, the Helen Mirren. Liam serving her room. They didn't start acting together or anything then, but it's a cool story he loves sharing. So, school's out, and Liam tries university at Queen's University Belfast in the early 1970s, but it wasn't his jam, so he bounced. This dude tried everything, from brewing some good old Guinness beer to driving forklifts. If you ever doubt your odd jobs, remember Liam's been there, done that. Then life took him to Newcastle, company down. But amidst the grind, guess what calls him back? Acting. He starts hanging out at the Belfast Lyric Players Theater, diving deep into roles and skits. It's the spark he needed. Before you know it, he's off to Dublin, then London, and boom, Hollywood's calling. Beginning of career. So, after Liam did his thing in Ballymena and started picking up momentum, he entered the wild world of acting in the mid-70s. By 1993, this guy was not just any actor, he was THE Liam Neeson. Now, back in the day, like mid to late 70s, Liam wasn't just jumping straight into blockbuster movies. Nope. He started where most legends do, the stage. First, he was doing his thing at the Lyric Players Theater in Belfast. Two years of sheer brilliance, if you ask anyone who saw him, but that was just his warm-up. Next stop, Dublin's Abbey Theater. Think of it as the Broadway of Ireland. This was where Liam really flexed his acting muscles. Folks couldn't help but sit up and say, Who's this Neeson guy? Enter the big screens. 1978, Liam's in a film called Pilgrim's Progress. Sure, it was a small gig, but everyone has to start somewhere, right? But the game changer? Three years later, in 1981, Liam bags a role in this epic film called Excalibur. Ever heard of King Arthur and his sword buddies? Yep, that one. And guess who Liam was chilling with on set? The Queen herself, Helen Mirren, and the iconic Patrick Stewart. These were the big leagues now. Liam was Sir Gawain, running around with swords and armor. 1984 was a biggie for him. Two major movies. First up, The Bounty, a World War II flick. Imagine Liam in the same frame as legends like Anthony Hopkins and Mel Gibson. That's like a rock band with all the lead singers. And then he goes all romantic on us. He's opposite Diane Keaton in The Good Mother. From swords and ships to love and drama, Liam was everywhere. 1987 got even better. Liam jumped into Suspect, a nail-biter of a courtroom drama. And guess who was with him? The iconic Cher and Dennis Quaid. Liam's character? A homeless, silent guy from the Vietnam War days who gets blamed for a murder. Heavy stuff, right? But man, did he nail it! In 1988, Liam was rubbing shoulders with the cowboy legend Clint Eastwood in The Deadpool. When you're acting with Dirty Harry himself, you know you're in the big league. Fast forward to 1990. Lights, camera, action, and boom! Liam is on screen as Dr. Peyton Westlake, or should we say, Dark Man, in Sam Raimi's film, a scientist turned vigilante, all masked up, seeking revenge. Sounds like a superhero gig, doesn't it? This movie wasn't just a hit. It showed everyone that Liam could be the action hero we all needed. 
Now grab some tissues. 1993 brought the big one. Schindler's List directed by none other than Steven Spielberg. You've heard of it, right? This film, oh boy, it was a roller coaster of emotions. Liam stepped into the shoes of Oscar Schindler, the guy who saved over a thousand lives during the Holocaust. Critics and fans couldn't get enough. The movie, a massive hit. Liam's acting, top notch. So good, in fact, that the dude got an Oscar nod for best actor. Yep, that's how epic it was. And with this, Liam wasn't just another actor, he was Hollywood royalty. Off screen, Liam kept it pretty cool, not diving into controversies and all. Rise to fame. After the brilliance of Schindler's List in 1993, Liam was on a roll. Hollywood couldn't get enough of the guy. From that Oscar-worthy act, our man's star was shooting straight up and he wasn't slowing down for anyone. So, 1994 comes around, and guess what? Liam decides to dive deep again, portraying a Jesuit priest in Nell. Who's he with, you ask? The ever-talented Jodie Foster and the amazing Natasha Richardson. Fun fact, sparks flew off screen with Natasha, and the two tied the knot later on. Hollywood love story alert. But back to the movie. Liam gave us that quiet, deep, I'm thinking about life kind of vibe. Once again, proving that the dudes got layers. Now hit the bagpipes and throw on a kilt because 1995 was all about the Scottish Highlands. Liam's leading Rob Roy, and boy did he nail it. The movie had it all drama, action, and a sword fight that'd make even pirates jealous. Liam's role as Rob Roy McGregor, pure charisma. His sword fighting scenes, total chills. Movie buffs everywhere still rave about how those scenes are some of the bests in the biz. But let's zoom out for a sec. Between 1993 and the year 2000, Liam wasn't just any actor, he was the actor. Every director wanted him, every audience adored him, and every role he took, he owned it. Whether he was in the depths of emotion or swinging a sword in the Scottish Highlands, Liam makes sure you feel every moment with him. And then in 1996, Liam decides to get all historical on us. He stepped into the shoes of Michael Collins in, well, Michael Collins. Who's that, you ask? Only the Lion of Ireland himself, a real powerhouse of a guy during Ireland's fight for freedom. It wasn't just some costume drama. It was raw, real, and packed with emotion. You could feel the weight of Ireland's struggle just by watching him. Then three years later, in 1999, our man decides to swap history books for mythological tales. He becomes Zeus in Clash of the Titans. Okay, so it's a remake, but Liam isn't here to play copycat. He took Zeus, gave him that niece and oomph, and man, did the skies thunder. 1999 was a busy year. Liam decides, why not jump into a haunted house? And so, he dives into the haunting, playing this kind of sneaky doc with a couple of secrets up his sleeve. It was spooky. It was thrilling. And Liam? He was having a ball in a completely different ballpark. Oh, but here's the mega bomb of 1999. Liam steps into a galaxy far, far away. Yep, Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. Becoming Qui-Gon Jinn, the lightsaber-swinging Jedi Master, was no small gig. Star Wars fans are a passionate bunch, dissecting every detail, but our man Liam held his own. Some loved the film, some didn't, but Qui-Gon? Total legend. Liam gave the Star Wars world a touch of his magic. Rolling into the year 2000, Liam puts on a lighter shoe in Gunshy. Picture this. A crime comedy where Liam's this undercover dude trying to juggle work mess with personal drama. It's funny, it's edgy, and Liam, as always, is spot on. On the personal front, 1994 is all kinds of sweet for Liam. He marries the lovely Natasha Richardson, and let's be honest, they were hashtag couple goals. The way they looked at each other. Pure movie magic off screen. 2002 was a big year. First up, Gangs of New York. This isn't just any old historical drama. We're talking about a gritty, messy New York in the 1800s. And guess who's right there, smack in the middle of it? Yep, our man Liam, playing Priest Valen. And with folks like Leo DiCaprio and Daniel Day-Lewis running around, you know this was a major movie moment. But wait, that year ain't over. Remember his Jedi stint as Qui-Gon Jinn? Well, he swung by the Star Wars universe again in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. It was just a voice cameo, but come on, it's Star Wars. Even a whisper from Liam in that world feels epic. Fast forward to 2004, and Liam's diving headfirst into a totally different pool. Enter Kinsey, 
This isn't just a film, it's a deep dive into the life of Alfred Kinsey, the dude who wanted to chat about, well, the birds and the bees. You know the stuff people whispered about? It was brave, it was raw, and most of all, it was Neeson showing off his incredible skills. 2005 was the year Liam decided to dance with the dark side. We're talking Batman Begins, people. Directed by the genius Christopher Nolan, Liam turned up the heat as Ra's Al Ghul. Gone were the days of him just being the good guy. Now he's the villain, and not just any villain, but the mastermind with a sneaky elegance. Who saw that coming? But hold on, because 2008 was around the corner, and oh boy, was it a year to remember. Taken was a whole new level of Liam. Here he was, Brian Mills, an ex-CIA guy on a mission to find his kidnapped daughter. Switching gears a bit, did you catch him voicing a lion? Yep, he lent his voice to Aslan in the Chronicles of Narnia in both 2005 and 2008. It was pure magic for anyone who grew up reading C.S. Lewis's stories, The Tragedy. But life wasn't all movies and magic for Liam. In 1994, Liam Neeson and actress Natasha Richardson tied the knot. Together, they had two cool kids, Michael and Daniel. They weren't just any Hollywood couple. They were that couple, you know, the one that made you believe in true love. But in 2009, life threw a wicked curveball. Natasha had a skiing accident in Quebec. At first, she brushed it off, thinking she'd be okay. But things took a heartbreaking turn. She slipped into a coma, and at just 45, she was gone. Liam was crushed. Imagine losing your other half. He's been open about how much he misses her, saying he thinks of her every single day. Amid his pain, though, he made a noble choice. He donated Natasha's organs, and three people got a second shot at life because of that decision. And since we're on the topic of bumps in the road, let's talk about Kinsey. That movie stirred up some drama. With its hot-button topics, it was like a magnet for side eyes from some conservative groups. They weren't too thrilled about the movie diving deep into human sexuality. Liam, being the lead, found himself smack dab in the middle of these heated chats. But true to form, he stood tall, defended the film, and highlighted the importance of understanding our human selves and the groundbreaking work of Alfred Kinsey. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Now it's time for the subscriber's pick. Ever glanced at a photo and felt it whispered a thousand secrets? That happened when our subscriber stumbled upon two contrasting photos of Liam Neeson. In a vintage black and white snap, young Liam looked dashing, every inch the Hollywood star. But a recent pick? A stark contrast, weathered, tired eyes as if carrying burdens of untold stories. Was it an intense film role, a mysterious adventure, or just life's roller coaster wearing him down? The older photo held a glint of mischief, the recent one, wisdom. What tales lie between these snapshots? The answers await. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, continuing with his life. The success after. In 2008, Liam lent his voice magic to a couple of cool projects. First, he's back as the mighty Aslan in the Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. And if you're into animation and charming tales, you gotta check out Ponyo on the Cliff by the Sea. It's a Japanese anime by Hayao Miyazaki, and yes, Liam's voice is in there too, giving it that extra sprinkle of awesomeness. But wait, the Neeson train didn't stop there. He decided to get a bit steamy in the movie, Chloe. Now, this isn't your regular love triangle thriller, it's directed by Adam Egoyan, and it turned out to be his biggest cash cow to date. And then, Liam took on a role that's pure nostalgia. John Hannibal Smith in the movie spin-off of the A-Team series. If you were a fan of the show, or even if you weren't, seeing Liam bring this iconic character to life, totally worth it. Oh, and he jumped back into the magical world of Narnia. Yes, you guessed it. The majestic lion Aslan roars again in the Chronicles of Narnia, the voyage of the Dawn Treader, in 2010. Liam Neeson's hustle didn't stop. In 2011, he kicked off with the thrilling Unknown. Filmed in the super cool streets of Berlin, this was no ordinary action movie. Guess what made it even cooler? The same director, Jean Collet Serra, and Liam teamed up for a bunch of action-packed movies. We got Nonstop in 2014, Run All Night in 2015, and The Commuter in 2018. Now rewind a bit to 2010. 
Remember Steven Spielberg, the genius behind Schindler's List? Well, Liam and Spielberg were cooking up something big. Liam was prepping to play Abraham Lincoln in a 2012 movie, Lincoln, which was based on this amazing book called Team of Rivals. Liam got super into it, reading Lincoln's letters and even visiting the places Lincoln lived. But in a twist, Liam felt he was too old for the part. And guess who stepped in? Daniel Day-Lewis. Back to our main man, Liam. In 2010, he appeared in the Showtime series The Big C and played, well, himself in BBC Two's Life's Too Short in 2011. Later that year, Liam was part of this super cool arena show of Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. Instead of stepping onto the stage, he appeared as a 3D hologram. 2012 was another whirlwind year for Liam. He took on the wilds in The Grey and people were loving it. His performance? Top-notch. And remember Taken? There was a sequel, Taken 2, and yeah, it was as intense as the first one. And for comic book fans, Liam made a splash in The Dark Knight Rises, the epic conclusion to Christopher Nolan's Batman series, where he reprised his role as Raz Al Ghul, jumping to 2014. Liam teamed up again with the legendary Martin Scorsese for the film adaptation of the novel Silence. In the same year, he lent his voice to the hilarious bad cop, good cop in The Lego Movie. And yep, that movie was a big hit. Everyone was loving it. In Nonstop, released on February 28, 2014, he was Bill Marks, fighting bad guys at 30,000 feet. Oh, and did you catch him in the BBC Two series Rev? blink and you might have missed him, but he made a sneaky appearance as God. And that's not all. He starred in A Walk Among the Tombstones, hunting down some pretty nasty villains as Detective Matthew Scudder. Let's talk Super Bowl 49. If you were munching on snacks during the ad breaks, you might have spotted Liam in a hilarious Clash of Clans commercial. He was all intense, going by the name Angry Neeson 52 and was super mad at this player, Big Buffett Boy 85 for wrecking his game, all while waiting for a scone. It was a fun nod to his Taken role. In 2016, Liam had a storyteller vibe going. He was the voice behind a three-part RTE1 documentary on the Easter Rising titled 1916. The same year he did voice work and motion capture for the monster in the touching movie A Monster Calls. Now, post the Taken movies, something changed. Liam became the action guy. We mean he was already cool before, but now he was the king of thrills. Alongside movies like The A-Team, Unknown, The Grey, Nonstop, and a few others we've mentioned, he starred in a string of heart-pounding films. Tragedy and Controversies Life hit Liam Neeson with another blow in 2019. His nephew, Ronan Sexton, died from a head injury. This wasn't some freak accident either. Ronan had this fall from a phone booth while hanging out with buddies in Brighton. It happened five years before he died, and he was only 35. Liam's sister, Bernadette, Ronan's mom, was heartbroken. She spoke about Ronan being this amazing person, someone with a lot left to offer to the world. After losing two family members in such a tragic way, Liam faced his own battles. He got trapped in this dark place, dealing with alcohol and a ton of sadness. He spoke about drowning his sorrows in drinks and even having some pretty dark thoughts. There was also this time when he was so angry about his wife's death that he thought about doing something really bad to a random black person. Yep, not cool at all. But Liam came forward about it, expressing deep regret and said sorry. Therapy and good pals were his lifeline, helping him deal with all that rage and hurt. But life in the limelight means facing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Liam's been in the hot seat a few times. Like when he played a Turkish Muslim in the 2016 movie The Promise. Some folks cried foul, saying it was a case of whitewashing. Then there was the time he vouched for his buddy Mel Gibson. Mel had his share of controversies, including making some pretty off-color remarks. And when the hashtag MeToo movement was making headlines, Liam shared his two cents, hinting that some dudes might be getting a raw deal. Needless to say, not everyone was on board with his view. Liam's not just a big movie star, he's got opinions and isn't afraid to share them, especially when it comes to gun control in the US. He straight up believes the rules need to be tighter. Back in January 2015, while chatting with the Gulf News, Liam even went on to call the US gun laws a disgrace, especially after hearing about the Charlie Hebdo shootings earlier that month. But guess what? This didn't sit well with everyone. 
Para USA, the company behind the guns Liam wielded in the Taken movies, was not impressed. They shot back, saying they'd never again give guns for any movie starring Liam. Yep, they pulled the plug just like that. 2014 was also the year Liam decided to stand up for New York City's horse carriage industry. Mayor Bill de Blasio was on a mission to get rid of horse-drawn carriages in Central Park. Liam was having none of it. He even penned his thoughts in the New York Times, explaining how the carriage trade was safe for everyone. The horses, the people working there, and even tourists. Plus, it helped so many immigrants earn their bread and butter. On another note, Liam's been quite vocal about women's rights, too. He lent his voice to an Amnesty International video pushing for legal abortion in Ireland. Some folks weren't too happy, calling him out as anti-Catholic. But hey, everyone's got an opinion, right? Brexit was another hot topic Liam didn't shy away from. In 2016, he expressed his worries, thinking it might set back the progress made on border controls due to the peace process. He definitely wasn't thrilled with the idea of Brexit. And then, in September 2017, guess what? Liam had something to say about the U.S. political scene. He compared President Donald Trump's time in office to the Watergate scandal, which had earlier hit President Richard Nixon. Liam's point? No one, not even the president, is above the law. Everyone has to answer for their actions. In June 2020, Liam's mom, Kitty, passed away. The worst part? Due to the whole COVID-19 mess, he couldn't even travel back home for her funeral. Personal life. And here's the scoop on Liam's personal life. Back in the early 80s, Liam shacked up with the fabulous Helen Mirren. They hit it off while working on Excalibur in 1981. Fun fact, Helen helped Liam get his first agent. Fast forward to 1991 and Liam's dating none other than Barbara Streisand. But it was a short fling, lasting just about nine months. Things took a romantic turn in 1993 when Liam met Natasha Richardson during a Broadway play, Anna Christie. They clicked, got hitched on July 3, 1994, and had two kids, Michael in 1995 and Daniel in 1996. But life wasn't always rosy. In 1998, the couple took on the Daily Mirror for spreading false stories about their marriage. They won. Instead of pocketing the cash, they donated their winnings to the victims of a bombing that happened in Omagh in August 1998. They settled down in Millbrook, New York in 2004. But we already know how that story ended in tragedy. Liam's not just Irish. He's also got British and American in him. He became an official American in 2009. But don't get it twisted. He's still super proud of his Irish roots. Speaking of which, his old university in Belfast gave him an honorary doctorate in 2009. And if you think Liam's all about the movies, think again. He became a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF in March 2011. He also supports Cinemagic, a charity in Belfast that helps young folks break into the movie biz. Also, Liam used to be a chain smoker, but he kicked the habit in 2003 while working on Love Actually. Yet, when he got the role of Hannibal in the 2010 movie the A-Team, he had to puff on cigars, which was kind the character's thing. He wasn't thrilled, but went with it for the film. In 2012, rumors swirled that Liam was switching to Islam. Not true, but he did fall in love with the Islamic call to prayer while filming in Istanbul. It felt hypnotic and special to him. He's also a fan of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Controversies continued. In January 2018, Liam caused quite a stir when he dropped by Ireland's Late Late Show. He shared his thoughts on the Me Too movement, calling it a witch hunt. He even brought up the story of Garrison Keillor getting the boot from Minnesota Public Radio. As you can guess, not everyone was happy about that. Fast forward to February 2019, and Liam's back in the headlines. This time, he's promoting his new movie, Cold Pursuit, which is all about a dad out for revenge. While chatting with The Independent, Liam dropped a bombshell from his past. Around 40 years earlier, a close female friend told him she'd been assaulted. When Liam found out her attacker was black, he was filled with rage. For a week, he roamed around carrying a kosh and hoping a black man would pick a fight with him so he could retaliate. Liam admitted he's super ashamed of how he acted back then. Later on Good Morning America, Liam tried to set the record straight. He emphasized that he was not racist, and that he would have felt the same anger if the attacker had been from any other background. But he did admit 
he deliberately went to areas where black folks lived. Eventually, he realized he needed to talk things out, so he sought guidance from pals and even a priest. He thinks people must have open chats about stuff like toxic masculinity and deeply rooted prejudice, whether it's in the U.S. or Northern Ireland. The backlash to his story was real. The fancy red carpet shindig for cold pursuit? Cancelled. But Liam wasn't left in the lurch. Some big names had his back. Michelle Rodriguez, Whoopi Goldberg, John Barnes, and Ralph Fiennes all publicly defended him. And if you're into shows, Liam popped up in an episode of Atlanta playing a version of himself, putting his own twist on the whole controversy. The Awards So, back in 2000, the town of Ballymena was like, Hey Liam! We want to give you the freedom of the town! But there was a bit of drama. Some folks from the Democratic Unionist Party weren't happy about the stuff Liam had said about growing up Catholic in Ballymena. He'd mentioned feeling like a second-class citizen back in the day. So instead of taking the award amidst all the tension, Liam passed. But he sent them a heartfelt letter talking about his love and pride for Ballymena. Fast forward to 28 January 2013 and guess what? The town gave him the freedom of the borough honor, and this time, Liam was there to accept it with open arms. Now, let's talk about other cool stuff that happened to our main man, Liam. In the same year, 2000, Queen Elizabeth II gave him the Officer of the Order of the British Empire title. Fancy, huh? Then, in 2008 in the Big Apple, Liam was handed the Performing Arts Award by the American Ireland Fund. They loved how he repped Ireland in such a stylish way. But wait, there's more. On the 9th of April 2016, Liam was in Dublin getting another cool award, the Outstanding Contribution to Cinema Award. And get this, the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, was the one handing it over. In 2017, Liam made it to a cool list of the top 200 big-hearted folks worldwide. He landed at number 74 for being an awesome philanthropist and making the world a better place. Lastly, on January 2018, Liam got another pat on the back from President Michael D. Higgins. This time, he received the Distinguished Service for the Irish Abroad Award. It's a big shout out to Irish folks doing great things around the world. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.